Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Diatone Taycan C25 Mark II. Yeah, kind of an interesting feature. Got two HD camera mounts on there. And before we get into the traditional tech and specs and all the things I normally start with, I think there's a few things that are unique that we need to cover. One would be the dual HD cameras. Well, that's not all that unique. We've seen that before. Uh, we used to call them cheater cameras, I think. And we used to see them sometimes below the rear or quad. But I think this is the first time we've actually seen a quad designed for that in a bind and fly format. So that, for those people that are creative, kind of opens up your template for what you can do with your video editing and how interesting you might be able to make it. But there's a few other things that I think are pretty unique. One is these prop protections. What is the prop protection out here? This material, I, I have not felt this before. It's It's got all these curves in it, so it's very rigid, and we have a number of different little spurs out here. But it's it's stiff, but yet it's flexible. It gives me the feeling that it's not going to take an impact and break. It's going to take the impact and respond, you know, coming back to shape and to form. And also, it's got all these slats in the prop protection, and they're curved both in the top and the bottom. So that should help its flight performance uh, to some degree. Also, the C25, you know, that's because of the 2.5-inch prop. Another thing is here on the bottom, we have more prop protection. The prop, for the first time in my experience, is actually protected from the bottom side in a pusher configuration as well. And these uh, protections are made of carbon fiber. Hopefully you can see some of that carbon fiber sort of look and layout. And with it being so thin, that is the one area where I'm thinking where if damage occurs, it could be to that carbon fiber area because those are very, very thin. I do think it'll take a pretty hefty impact, say a fail safe and then falling down to concrete. Maybe you go full blast into a tree or a metal pole, but uh, that's the one area that I am concerned about it possibly breaking. So this is uh, fairly interesting that we have so little carbon fiber, and yeah, that's the one carbon fiber plate that we've got right here along the top. Nope, not on the bottom. We just have more of this same sort of plastic molded material that's rigid yet stiff, but yet flexible as well. And you can see we can bottom mount a battery if we choose to. And I found for the first time, it was kind of enjoyable to do some of that slow, sort of smooth cruising filming sort of uh, flying. Actually went out a number of times over the course of a couple of days, uh, trying different batteries, trying to figure out which battery I felt was best for what I was trying to accomplish, and also trying to get some of the shots, especially that shot along the fence line. I like that. I know I oftentimes say it's pod racing and it's uh, speeders through the forest. It's not actual pod racing, but I think we all get on the same page. But when I go along that fence line, that's something I really like. And with two HD cameras, that's pretty cool. And yes, the mounts that it does come with are both for uh, the Insta360 Go or the Caddx Peanut. Uh, you could probably tell this one's a little bit bigger than this one, but this one also doesn't fit my original Insta360 Go, which is what I had on the tail end. I don't have a Caddx Peanut to show you, so I use my Go 2 up front and my original Go in the back. You could definitely mount up a naked GoPro or an SMO 4K or what have you that might have an amount that would fit for this sort of mount type. So it's very difficult to see, but it does have an all-in-one flight controller down in there, and it is the Mamba F722 Mark I. And just above that is the TX500, which is a power switchable VTX up to 500 milliwatts. The ESC rating on that all-in-one board is 35 amps, by the way. And the motors are the Mamba Toka 1404 4000 kV motors. The props down in there are the Gemfan 63 millimeter tri-bladed props. FPV camera is the Caddx Baby Rattel 2. Mine is the analog version, of course, and it did not come with a receiver. So I put an FR Sky RXSR down in there because Diatone includes the plugs, so just plug it right in. The mounts both have this kind of spring-loaded sort of dampening to them, but note the screw doesn't go far enough through to where you can get a nut on the other side. Got a right hand circular polarized antenna and it's mounted into a TPU mount back here that is also flexible. Got a legit battery strap with a metal buckle and a rubber texturized battery mat. Comes with an extra set of props. A USB-C cable because it does have a USB-C connection to the flight controller. My kit had an extra frame in it, but check your product descriptions. Uh, this might not come standard. Got a control board so you can change your camera settings. Wiring harnesses for your receiver zip ties, various spare screws, antenna tubes, an extra battery strap, some extra six millimeter screws, some extra seven millimeter screws, a couple extra wiring harnesses, 
little extra bit of battery mat. Two extra mounts in case maybe one tears off or you just don't like that uh, dampening version. A stubby antenna. If you get the version with a receiver on it, it has a guide. TX500 manual. You do have to unlock this to get the full power. Press and hold the button in for five minutes with power on. Little card on your receiver connection as well. And it also comes in a carrying case. It weighs just about 155 and three quarter grams. With the two cameras I used it, the original Go and the Go 2, it weighs just about 200 and a half grams. I flew it mainly on these three batteries. I get about a minute and a half less flight time on this GNB 850. It's obviously a smaller and lighter battery. Probably not appropriate for this quad. With the Flywoo 4S 900 milliamp battery, I get 291 grams. With the Race Day Quads, which is made by GNB 850 milliamp 4S battery, I get 299 and a half grams. This also comes in different versions. Say you wanted the Cadix Vista with the Polar Camera, or you wanted it without the Vista and the Polar Camera, and you're just going to add your own, you can also buy that one. Links down in the video description. I was quite there to start the flight so that you could get a good feel for what it sounds like. Sound is one of those things that I hear oftentimes about. How loud is it? I have got a camera sitting about three foot from me on the table sitting there uh, underneath the pergola. And that camera is what I've mixed into this flight video to give you an idea of what it sounds like, what it sounds like at different distances from you, whether you're behind a tree or the swing set or anything like that, uh, so that you can judge how loud this is because oftentimes with these sim whoops they are very loud i think in this particular case they've improved how loud it is based upon their new prop protection or duct sort of design with more airflow going through there but we still have some very sharp edged what we used to call bull nose type of props in there that just emit a lot of noise even without the prop protection if you go back to this sort of prop style a few years ago, not that these were out a few years ago, these aren't old props, but that sharp edge, sort of flat outer edge prop, they just always emit a lot of noise. I think one way around that is to go to something that has more of that fin tip sort of design. I think that tends to deflect a little bit of the audio um, there as well. Uh, we're going to get about six minutes, five minutes and 54 seconds to be precise in this flight. It's just, uh, a slow sort of cruisy flight. You're doing that filming sort of flight. Got a nice day where the wind was relatively calm. Uh, speaking of wind, I did fly this on a day where it was 17 to 18 miles an hour. And it was the kind of wind that I could actually feel throughout the yard. And it does still push it around. But at this weight, it's going to push it around less that wind that is push it around less because of the weight of the quad you know when you get your all up weight up to almost 300 grams if you fly it at 300 grams obviously you don't have to fly it with the hd cameras or you don't have to have both the hd cameras if you want to come in at say you know 250 grams which can be a magic number for some people your weight is going to be enough to offset some wind, but it's, it's something that it's hard to give you a gauge on it because I still felt, even with that 17 to 18 mile an hour wind that had gusts that went above that, that I could still control it and I could still fly my lines pretty well. Just when the wind really came up, those gusts really came up, then I would have a little bit of a struggle, say, when I tried to pass through the swing set or underneath this uh, Japanese maple sitting just off the patio. So, you know, obviously, your, your weather is going to be different than mine, but I wanted to give you a feel. I have wind. <laughs> Oftentimes I have wind. And so I can tell you about my flight experience when it comes to that wind. And that's that shot along the fence there. I wish I would have gotten a bit lower before I really kind of went down that line, but uh, I do that a number of times in this flight and all my flights. It's just something that I enjoy. And I've spoken to a number of you in the comments that you also enjoy those sort of things, you know, passing by something real close. We will also be taking a look at the Caddix Baby Retail on the video dis reception, what you see in the goggles. This, of course, is an HD recording that has got stabilization built into the recording from the Insta360 Go app. I believe I use the FPV stabilization on the app on this particular one. Uh, you got a little bit of that view in the intro of having two cameras on what you might be able to do. People who are much more creative than I am probably have all sorts of different ideas of what you might be able to do. I am very interested in knowing what they are because if I'm in one of those situations where uh, I might want to do some filming, 
I can, uh, I'd probably move away from the original Go camera and probably into the SM04K or my naked GoPro as uh, one of the two cameras. I think the Go 2 does a pretty good job. But if I were to be in one of those situations of making something unique, I'm sure interested in hearing what your creative ideas are, what you could do with two HD cameras, um, how you would position them, you know, as far as the camera angle goes, I presume the front one you want to match kind of what the horizon in, but the back one, it seems like we have all sorts of uh, different possibilities that we might be able to use in order to um, make our video interesting, eye-catching, and fun to watch. This does come with a beeper and I didn't highlight it during the specs because because of the noise of the quad, I don't find that the beeper is going to be all that useful as far as being able to tell you when your battery gets low. Matter of fact, at the tail end of this, it's going off and I would challenge to say that we probably can't hear it. Um, I couldn't hear it when I was flying it, but with a beeper, you can use it if you go down and you're not quite certain where you're at. You can use it as kind of a lost model alarm by setting up a switch on your radio to trigger that beeper, uh, which could come in very, very handy because it is still a relatively small quad. Uh, and if you go down in some uh, thicker brush or something, that could come in very handy. I should have also noted during the quick specs how they've mounted that USB port. That's pretty handy and slick how they did that to make it real accessible without having to add a bunch of bulk or weight to the quad. There are some interesting bits about the frame that I didn't cover that we can get into the longer discussion. Kind of unused bits. So if you were wanting to trim off some weight or you maybe have some ideas on what you could use those unused bits, yeah, they're there. I, I think uh, there's uh, all sorts of different possibilities. And I did not use antenna tubes on my antenna, so uh, that's part of the weight in the calculation. Hopefully, hopefully you notice that that uh, there's probably about two grams, maybe in total length, if you use all of them. Okay, we've ended the flight now. Let's jump into looking at uh, kind of the tail section of our Caddx Baby Rattel flight. Here we are. You know, we're about four minutes and forty seconds swinging around the barbecue here. This is what you see in the goggles. And this is at 500 milliwatts. I'm running race band eight, as you can see in the top right-hand corner. Ignore the RSSI in the very top right-hand right -hand corner. Uh, I think I need to flash this receiver. And also, you may have noticed already that uh, I get telemetry lost and tele telemetry low warnings, and I'm not far out. I have a feeling that my receiver, that is my receiver, I've reused it many times over the years, it might be on its last legs. Or maybe I did something to it when I kind of put everything inside the body, because the first six or seven flights i didn't notice that but on my last 10 flights it was pretty consistent that it was just seemed to be giving low ssr low rssi uh warnings or telemetry lost warnings so maybe i've got an antenna that i bonked and i need to get that back on there or i've just kind of damaged my receiver so that's nothing about the quad that's just my components and what i use here on the channel to get me by you can see we've got the low battery warning and you can see we're at 3.4 volts per cell. We're going to come into land here in about 10 seconds. And it takes me some time, a number of flights, to kind of figure out where I need to land these things. And I oftentimes make adjustments on the beta flight configuration for those warnings. We're going to go back to the home screen now and you can see the battery is recovering. We're, we're above 3.5 volts per cell, so our battery is in good shape. No harm there. And the flight time, of course, as I mentioned previously, 5 minutes and 54 seconds. So I did also fly it faster uh, with both cameras. Again, I spent all of my time flying it with both the cameras that I've shown you, but I wanted to take a look and give you a closer shot at what the frame looks like without all the components on it. You can kind of see where things mount up. Some of the extra bits that I referenced were these round spots. I presume these were originally designed for possibly some standoffs to give it maybe some extra rigidity or maybe camera protection or some sort of mounting. So you could definitely probably try to clip those off if you wanted to, because that is a spot, say if you go through a tree, a little branch gets through there. Not that we don't have other spots, a branch can't get through, but extra spots that could get through. So you might want to clip those off. Uh, again, that's up to you. Uh, you could route your antenna if it extends far enough out through those holes. I did not do that. As you can see here, I just kind of stuck them up this way. Uh, but for more permanent antenna placement, uh, that hole could be in handy as long as your antenna comes out the ends. Uh, that doesn't necessarily give you the most possible range because I think we're supposed to have them in an L, one up, one out, and uh, that gives us the best possible range. Of course, 
In today's uh, scope, we could just go Express LRS and we are going to outfly our video well before our control link ever gets close to fail safing at this point. Uh, but yeah, this, this is fairly flexible, but yet, like I said, it's stiff when I try to squeeze this frame down, even on the inside where it's not even all that curved, like see the curves on the outside here, even on the inside, it's pretty rigid. And out here on the outer part, because it is curved, it's even more rigid. So I think, I think this prop protection, I'm intrigued by this. And I'm really curious to see with others who get this, what they find with the prop protection. I don't think it did that much to dampen the noise as far as with those props but I think there's potential in this being a, a pretty good design. It's a slimmer sort of prop protected design. You know, we used to have, when the Sin Whoops first came out, they were so big, and, and I think some of them still are, but they've redefined their ducting and, and separated things out even further. But um, yeah, this, this is fairly interesting material. I'm hoping we see some, depending upon its weight, maybe some whoop frames, some traditional 65 millimeter and 75 millimeter whoop frames made out of this stuff, because it seems, it seems stiff, which for whoop racing would be good if it's durable and not too heavy. But I wanted to give you a look at that. Uh, I probably already missed it because I got on a little long there in the tooth, but there is a flight deficiency when you're going fast. And I do have my camera angle, which is about, hard to show you here, but this would be about the camera angle I was flying at for the FPV camera. You can see it there that when you go along like that stretch along the, the back fence line and you do a hard 180 turn, it will tend to drop an arm. But I did find if I jammed the throttle hard, like 100%, that it wouldn't drop it as dramatically. It would be much more minor. Very specific flight scenario of a flight flaw, but I did find it, so I wanted to make sure I disclosed that to you guys so you can you know, know what you're getting into. Uh, the, the price on this varies depending upon which version. The version that I've got here is a little over $200, I think 210 off the Diatones website. Of course, you probably find it various other places. I don't think this is at any state side shops just yet. Uh, but you know, if you're interested in something like this, I'll have links down in the video description. Uh, I did mention in the quick specs how they give you two different antennas. And I think that's a nice little touch that Diatone does. They always give us lots of extras, extra screws, extra wiring harnesses for receivers. Documentation already comes. Uh, we, in this case, we've got these extra mounts. I'm pretty sure that the HD mounts up here come with it as well. But again, check your product description. Check the product listings to make sure. And uh, they, they just, Dytone's one of those few companies that does that. It, they tend to give you all the extras that you might need. I did mention it, the uh, USB port is right there and it's good and stiff. This is, a, I think, a post right here because it's real stiff. So I wouldn't be concerned about the USB port becoming flimsy or damaged in any way because it is, if you can't tell, you know, I put a fair bit of pressure on it right there with my finger and it's really just not moving around at all. Of course, the theory on being a pusher, pusher theory is that it's supposed to be more stable. I don't find that when it comes to the feeling, whether it's a pusher or not a pusher, I don't find there'd be any difference. I do really like the fact that they put some protection on the bottom of the quad. So if you were to come into land or maybe you had an unintended landing, if you were to come down and the surface isn't completely flat, that if it's big enough not to go through these little spots, you know, say a stick, say maybe you come down and there's a rock, at least that wouldn't stop your prop from spinning. Cause when we arm with air mode, Prop can't spin, we could have a voltage spike that kills the ESC. With this on here, we've got some protection from those different scenarios where if you're taking off or you're landing and then you try to take off again, that whatever it is that's underneath the quad didn't necessarily get up into the prop. Of course, a stick or something, you know, my finger size or so can still get up through there. So it's not 100%, but it's way better than being completely exposed. Of course, they use hex screws, just like Diatone always does on all their different uh, screws. And they always have this sort of chrome beveled edge. It's a nice flare or touch there. Uh, there is a capacitor that I didn't mention. It's right down there. And once again, I cannot see that clearly. That could say, well, you could probably see what I can see there. It just says M, uh, 3M2041. That might be a part number from the capacity manufa capacitor manufacturer. 
Now, even with my flashlight out, I cannot make out what the size of that capacitor is. Not that it matters all that much. I just get vexed on that when I can't see it because I know someone will ask and I can't tell them exactly what it is because I forgot to take a picture when I had it apart. I do take a look at those screws at the front and the back in these HD mounts. The screws, uh, you can't see it on this side because the screw head, but this side, you can see where the screw does go all the way through. It's just a touch short that we're, we really can't get a nut on this side where you can get a pinch on it. So if you do crash, the camera just kind of flops down or if you crash backwards, it's just, it's holding the camera in place. And I didn't have a problem with it outside of the flopping when I did crash. So we do need a nut on the other side to get a good pinch on that angle so that it holds steady. Uh, so these are 16 millimeters. I would say look for an 18 millimeter screw. Uh, maybe it's just a mispacking in my particular kit. Maybe they meant to put 18 millimeter. The baggie that these two screws came out of uh, said 16 millimeter on them. So uh, that could have just been a mistake in the packaging of the particular quad I got. But I did notice that we don't have a long enough screw to where we can get a nut on the other side and the bag that these screws came out of did not have nuts so something else to take note of there yeah i applaud diatone uh in the sin whoop design of doing something different and i don't know what it costs to find different materials like this and to redesign a mold and then to cut some fiber carbon fiber like this uh, i like it when companies try to do new things and they're thinking a little bit differently than all the other companies out there so i have to applaud diatone at the very least uh, for that. If you are interested in the Diatone Taycan C25 Mark II, there'll be links down in the video description. As I said, the analog version that I've got uh, comes in a little over $200, and then you can go all the way up to like $340 when you're buying, say, the Vista with the Polar and a TBS Crossfire receiver um, version. So the, the price is real very, and I do have those links down in the video description to Diatone's website as well as any other website that might be carrying this product at the time. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.